Hey, David Blatter. How are you doing? Good, man. Welcome to Berlin. Thank you. So this is your first gig with Film in Berlin, is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, And when you started the tour in January, South America, North America, and now in Europe? Yes. Have there been any Well, we lights? did the Northeast. Uh, we did some shows up there. Those were really great. Yeah. Great shows. Um, you know, played uh, St. Midas in Brooklyn. You know, played the Stone in San Francisco, not San Francisco, in uh, New York City. It's, a, it's like an improv, avant-garde jazz uh, uh, venue. Awesome. And uh, headed by John Zorn. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was that was definitely a highlight. Yeah. Uh, Jerry was playing piano. I was playing drums with brushes and Pancho obviously on bass. Oh, so nice. kind of reminiscent to the last song on the album, which is Corner Girl. Great, yeah, with the trumpet and stuff. With the yeah. trumpet and everything. But this was just a trio, and I was playing brushes. And it was aggressive, but like aggressive jazz, you know. And or, were you improvising then, or doing improvising? Yeah. Song? yeah, it was improvising. And what about the shows in the Simple Tour? Was that on a cruise ship? Oh, that was a lot ship? of fun, yeah. 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 We were on a cruise ship and uh, uh, you know, we got asked to, to perform. It was only one night, you know, the first night we got there. Uh, you know, we played a show and you know, we were relaxing for the rest of the days. And it, was, yeah. it was nice, you know, yeah. it was good. You know, but by the fourth day you wanted to get off that ship. So with the new album, it's great congratulations by the way. Thank you. And your son is the engineer on it? Yeah, he was the recording, yes. He was, re he was the recording engineer. That must be great working with your son. Yeah, it's very good. And is, does he work with other bands? Or? Yeah, he's working with uh, my other son's band. A band's called Two Humans. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a trio. And, you know, it's very much, you know, it's modern. It's heavy, but, you know, heavy in a more... Uh, alternative way, oh, yeah, cool. you know, so, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, the realm, kind of the style of the muse. Oh, right. A little bit like That's that. Cool. A little bit, not yeah, much, yeah. you know, but that kind of heaviness. Oh, yeah. you know, it only gets to a certain level. And it's more accessible to it's the more accessible. public. Yeah, I mean, that kind of you know, 19, 20 year old kids, you yeah, know, yeah. and then it's just, you know, they're, they're hungry, they want to play, and, and they're doing a thing, they're recording their second album now. Oh, nice. And you were producer on this album, and mm -hmm. you did you also produce on one? Yes, I did. And with, was that your first production, mm -hmm. like producing yes. an album? Yes, I've always wanted to produce, and uh, you know, this was my chance to, you know, kind of, you know, steer the musicians and kind of where I wanted the band and do it to go. Way. Yeah. And does the production come in when you're writing, like arranging the songs as a producer, or...? Well, that's that's a whole different part. I yeah. mean, I have to step out being a musician and, and, and becoming a producer, although they all intertwine. But, you know, uh, when I'm improvising with the band and creating music, you know, I'm there as the drum. Yeah. You know, whereas when I take the tapes home and I listen to it, yeah. I become the producer. Yeah. It's like, okay, this is where this needs to be. And arrange all and, yes, yes. together to make the song. arrangement. Sometimes the notes, uh, you know, Jerry and, and Poncho, you know, will touch on a guitar riff or a bass riff, you know, that just comes out of again out of our improvisations. I said, guys, it would be a little bit, uh, uh, a little more menacing. You know, it's a little more powerful or more aggressive if we just change that one note. Yeah. In other words, it doesn't sound as happy. Yeah. You know, you got to give it that kind of, kind of yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think the difference between this album and harmonic, these seem more like structured songs. Yeah, yeah. Like, was that intentional or did it just turn out that way? Well, Jerry and I have known each other since 1995. We, uh, we had songs that we recorded on harmonic that were written in 95, between 95 and 2000. Oh, okay. So, those with the addition of, uh, I think, a couple or a few songs that we wrote that were structured, uh, for example, Held in Light and uh, Way Down, yeah. uh, and I think there might have been another one that he had written for the album. And then the other pieces, uh, three or four pieces, were uh, were improvisations. Yeah, it sounds more of an yeah, yeah. feel of that album. Yeah, it people. kind of, you know, gave the album a, a, a certain flow, a certain energy. And, uh, that's why we included those. You know, yeah. It just it just felt right. It's great that it doesn't sound like anyone else. You hardly ever hear any band come out these days that 
doesn't remind you of someone else straight away. That's yeah, the only thing yeah, that that's, I love about. I think that's my frustration. I think uh, today in music, you know, is that I hear a lot of similarities. I don't know if that comes from years of listening to music, yeah. and you know, you're wiser. You kind of sense things a little better. Yeah. Uh, and, and their origins. It's like, oh, geez, I've heard this before. You know, this band, this band, and this band have done that riff. Yeah, exactly. But a variation of it, or the drummer. Yeah. You know, there's, uh, you know, there's not that many, uh, there isn't that many drummers out there that, you know, look at the, at the guitar riff and add something that's a little more creative than just yeah, four, like, four beats. Or something that's adding to the song exactly. instead of just showing off or playing yeah, as yeah. fast as they can. Complimenting the song. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. And with harmonic, you did Hell and Light video. Or you, do you have a video plan for this album? Um, Actually, every night we're trying, well, most of the nights uh, we try to record yeah. you know, our shows and we're just going to piece something and do it, do it ourselves. Cool, and have two of it in the yeah, and have bits and like like around. I read or heard you say somewhere that you'd started writing this before Harmonic was out. Or we, like, yes. just as it came out. Yes, we were writing this as we were recording Harmonic oh, yeah. because we had the chance to record in a home. You know, it was uh, it was my girlfriend's house, and there was a nice drum room, yeah. you know, there that we were able to, you know, uh, to use. Not really a drum room; it was just a big tile. It was just a room, tile floor, uh, you know, plastered walls, and you know, and no, no, it wasn't high. It was just a wooden beam ceiling. And it's like when I walked in there for the first time, I said, "Man, this would be a great room for drums." Yeah. So. Uh, you know, I was anxious to record harmonic, and I pulled all the guys together and all the gear we had, and we just started recording. So during the recording session, we would go in there and just improvise and just play. So the majority of these songs were all written while we were uh, uh, recording them. And does that mean that some of the third album is being written now? Or yeah, yeah, we have written? we have like eight songs for the new album. Oh, excellent! Because this was finished a year ago. Yeah, it was finished. Ago. Ago. Yeah, it was finished a, a while ago, but it had to go through its different, uh, uh, you know, steps to get where it is right now. Yeah. Uh, we also uh, had the help of one of my dear friends, uh, Tyler Bates, who is the uh, uh, he's at, he's currently on tour with Marilyn Manson. Oh, he's yeah. the guitar player, and he helped co-write the Marilyn Manson album, and uh, he is also the composer for the movie Three Hundred. Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, this guy's like the composer. Yeah, he is, you know, do he is the man. Yeah. You know, with the orchestra, sheet music, everything. So uh, he helped master, and he also recommended uh, one of his friends, uh, uh, Robert Carranza, yeah. who is also a Volbeat uh, uh, engineer and producer. Not Volbeat, I'm sorry, uh, Mars Volta. Oh, yeah. To mix he, the album. Yeah, he mixed, so he mixed the album. And Tyler mastered it. Tyler is his assistant Wolfgang. And when you're writing this, do you kind of consciously think, let's write something different so it doesn't sound like anything else, or is what you three write together just like that? Or I think the individual members of the band, for example, I know what I want, yeah. you know, as far as the drums are. And usually that starts with the tuning, with the heads that you use, with the size drums you use. And um, you know, just like the bass player, he comes from a, a different genre. Yeah. He war. comes from war and yeah. tower of power. Yeah. I mean, the guy plays with some, you know, heavyweights. And, you know, Jerry, to me, is like, he, to me, is a genius. He, uh, he has his own sound and, uh, you know, plays his own style and his own notes that I don't hear anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the, the combination of all three of us is uh, uh, what you get on the record and it's, it's different. And it seems like everything you do is totally different. Like when, I remember when Group Incorporated came out and that was totally different. Phantom is nothing still sounds like that. Yeah. You played a show in December with Phantom. Yes, I did. Was that the first one in 10 years or something? Well, for me, yeah. The band oh, yeah, had yeah. performed in 2006 or 2005, but for me, it was, it was 10 years. So that must have been great. How, how did that show go? Phenomenal. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. And was there talk of more to come? Or? Yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. And what about with Group Incorporated? Is no, there... unfortunately, Gus, you know, he passed yeah. away. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I don't see. Wouldn't be the 
anybody out there capable of doing and delivering what he did. Yeah. It was uh, it's just to me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What is coming up with film? Like, is there any plans to go to Australia? Oh, I wish. Yeah. I wish. Yeah, actually, uh, my manager is talking to I think a couple of people down in, in Australia. Uh, to get me out there to do some drum clinics oh, yeah. and kind of to you know pave the way for for film yeah. you know uh, it's obviously a new market uh, we don't have distribution down there uh, and uh, you know kind of following the same pattern as we did in, in Brazil uh, you know I did some drum workshops down there and then uh, you know they called me back to do uh, some shows with film. So, which is, which is kind of cool. So hopefully, you know, we can do that with Australia. I would love to hit New Zealand and, uh, you know, in Australia. I think uh, definitely, you know, uh, the people down there would really enjoy it. Definitely. So let's talk about your new symbol. Yeah, February, I think, you know, it was, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I, you know, it was unveiled at NAM, oh, 2015. Yeah. yeah. And it's an exact replica. Uh, the bell may look a little bigger, but it actually isn't. It's exactly like the symbol I used on Rain and Blood. So, the, you know, what you hear on Criminally Insane, that's exactly what you're getting here. Yeah. But you have to use a nylon tip stick. Uh, exactly, and there you'll, you'll get that sound. Yeah. Um, I was really excited when I found the original because I thought I'd lost it, you know, or it was stolen. The, in one of, that was on the actual, yeah. yeah. The, the other ones, the crashes, I mean, they all probably yeah, broke. Yeah. 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 And, uh, but this one I was very happy to, to have found. And it was funny because I, I, was, I had played Austria, and I was crossing the border into, uh, into Switzerland, and I placed a phone call to Eric Peisty. You know, I, I've known him for, for years, and I know his wife, and of course everybody there, because I've been with the company since 1983 or 84. And I just put, based, uh, uh, placed a phone call just to see how he was doing. And, you know, he said, uh, Dave, uh, you're not part of our, you know, artist in inspiration line. And uh, I said, well, you know. So, look, this is what I found. I would love to do something like that. Was, yeah, it sounds really good. You know, we haven't had a 22-inch power ride, rude power ride, uh, in the line for forever. It's only 20, and uh, it's got the nice little, good old Slayer font. Yeah. I designed the original Slayer logo. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, so that I was able to to do this. You know, it's. Uh, and you want to just give it a few things? Yeah, sure. Should be good, it's gonna be loud.